11, and also prior to September 11, they were one of only three countries in the world that recognized the Taliban as a legitimate government of Afghanistan. So there's let very, very real in, questions here. Let me bring here. in former CIA director James Wolsey. Director Wolsey, I, again, yeah, I just, I, can't, I hate to keep saying the same thing. I don't understand how our system would allow this to happen. Please explain. I think this is an obsolete statute, Joe. Uh, this was passed late in the Cold War, and it's set up to check security procedures. It's not set up to look at something like what is at issue here. And I must say, I don't. I would be equally opposed to this if it were a Burmese company or a Venezuelan company. There are 89 countries in the world that are democracies operating under the rule of law, and their corporations are real corporations, and they act like real corporations. But if you have uh, either a dictatorial government like China or an authoritarian one like uh, in the UAE or in a number of other countries, the corporation is essentially a tool of the government. And we shouldn't be letting those types of institutions control strategic sectors of the American economy, whether it's the Chinese in oil or, or the UAE in port security. So, and so you're basically saying that this company will be an extension of the UAE, right? Sure. It's owned uh, by the UAE, and the UAE may, may behave fine with respect to this, but like any authoritarian country, the, the, its policies and its, uh, its personnel, its ruler could change, you know, with one assassination, one death. Uh, 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 you, you, it, people would feel very differently about this if it were an Australian company or a Japanese uh, company. These are real corporations that operate in democracies under the rule of law, and that's not what we have here. No doubt about it. Now, the families who lost loved ones on September 11th are obviously reacting and angry. Bill Doyle, whose son died in the World Trade Center attack, said, we're not securing our country in any way by selling our ports to foreigners. And then there's Bruce Deschel, who lost his son-in-law in the attacks and said, this administration is putting the selling of our country on the fast track. There are lots of loose ends that caused 9-11 to happen. I'm trying to close them. Arsalan, do you agree that there is no way we should have ever turned our ports, especially in New York and New Jersey, over to the United Arab Emirates? Well, I personally don't think that we should have turned it over to a foreign government to begin with. And I think that if you want to look at the, the actual policies involved, we should look at why we outsource our ports to any foreign government, regardless of you know, the ethnicity or the region uh, where, these, uh, where these companies take place. Well, well, what about their record on terrorism, though? I mean, there's a big difference between turning it over to, say, Belgium and the UAE. Well, I, I think what's important to understand here is that what this is necessarily doing is it's demonizing the entire world Muslim population for the acts of a, of a few uh, wait, French Wait, 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 no, 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 wait a second. No, no, wait, wait. Uh, no, we're talking about a country that the Associated Press is reporting was the staging ground for 9-11, for many of these terrorists, a country that also allowed nuclear parts to go to North Korea, to go to Iran, to go to Libya. Hey, I'm, country, I'm, like, the country that I'm like the director. Hold on a second. If China were to get this deal, I would be equally horrified. This has nothing to do with ethnicity. This has to do with, with terrorists, with with, with governments that we don't want running our ports. Well, I mean, uh, we are you to... really saying that I'm a racist, that I'm against Arabs because I want New York's port? to be run by a country that's democratic? Well, I mean, we have to clarify a few things here. First of all, none of these port security operations are being given over to this country. Um, the Department of Homeland Security is still going to have full autonomy when it comes to security at the ports. This, con uh, this company is going to basically hire the longshoremen, many of whom are card-carrying members of the AFL-CIO, basically just to, to run a business. I mean, so essentially, you know, what, every, what, what these politicians are saying with their knee-jerk responses, I mean, if they were really concerned about national security, you could walk up to the, the, lead, uh, the Speaker of the House, you know, the, Congress has been in session five days since January 1st, saying we need to vote on this because our national security is All threatened. All right, Congressman King, that sounds like a challenge to you, sounds like a challenge to the Speaker. Are you just playing well, fast and truth with the loose? No, Jack, I, uh, Joe, I've said that I would hold hearings to this. Having said that, under the law, as, as Director Woolsey said, this is a relic from the Cold War age, and it's a secret process which Congress is not even made aware of until the entire process is over. That's the problem we're facing. What I'm doing is calling on the president, though, is to set in motion a 45-day extension so that there can be a full investigation. But I do intend to hold hearings and do intend to go after this. But the fact is we, you know, 
The 9-11 Commission said that the government failed to show imagination. They have to show some imagination here and working with this existing statute until we can change it to prevent uh, countries and companies from taking this over. And I agree with Director Woolsey. This isn't just because they happen to be from an Arab country. This would be true if it came from any dictatorial country. And uh, there's the danger because then you have, uh, you know, if one dictator falls, another one comes in, and the second one may, uh, may not be so friendly. And even though they are not handling security per se, they will have to interface with the people who do do security for the United States at the ports, which means they will learn all about our security measures and procedures. And if you have somebody uh, working for al-Qaeda in that company, you will give them the keys to our security. And that, to me, is too dangerous a price to pay after what happened to us on 9-11. And, dire and Director Woolsey... Shouldn't Congress, shouldn't these local leaders have some sort of review in this process post 9-11? I think the Congress and the administration ought to use this as an opportunity to come together and put together a statute that makes sense in the post 9-11 world. Uh, this old uh, Cold War era statute, uh, the administration has discovered that uh, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act uh, is not a good tool, and I agree with them on this, to handle battlefield surveillance essentially of the sort they need with, have been doing with the National Security Agency uh, intercepts. They recognized how obsolete FISA is. This statute is equally obsolete and instead of using it they ought to uh, focus on how to get it fixed. Director, the deal was approved by a committee of 12 people that was headed by Treasury Secretary John Snow. Here's what his department had to say, quote, Clearly, no responsibility of government is more important than protecting the national security. And they went on, of course, to justify it. But I got to tell you, Director Woolsey, it sort of reminded me back in like 97, 98, when Bill Clinton was allowing Loral to pass missile technology onto China. I, again, does it not seem a, a, a fair complaint by many Americans that we appear to be putting financial needs of, let's say, Wall Street? over the better interests of our national security in America. That's kind of the world the statute was created in, and it's ha it has a very limited reach. It's only really to check up on security procedures, and that committee almost never, using the criteria in the statute, that committee almost never turns anything down. They just delay it, and sometimes it's withdrawn, uh, any of these applications for acquisition. They, they need a new statute that deals with the problems a congressman is, uh, is talking about, and and uh, they ought to use this as a chance to, to come together and, and work together in the country's interests instead of just arguing with one another. Arsalan, I want to see if we can agree on something. Would you agree with me that we'd be safer as a country if Great Britain had this responsibility instead of, say, communist China? Well, I, I think that I think it's in our best interest to have an American company protect the ports. I mean, I think that you know, if you want, if you want to change this archaic law, as uh, Director Woolsey would like us to do, then we should revisit whether or not we will outsource any of our ports to any foreign country, regardless of, of who they are. Keep it, you know, keep it domestic. I'm sure, you know, we have American shipping magnates here. We have the Coast Guard here, to, whose mission it is to protect uh, our, our ports. I think that it's important. But it, that if well, I mean, why does it have to be all or nothing, though? I mean, again, I, I think you and I both know that Great Britain would be a much safer bet for this type of job than UAE or China or Libya. Well, Joe, I mean... Well, actually, if, Joe, if, Joe if, if I can interject for a second on that, Joe. The fact is that it was a British company that had this contract for the last five years, and that British company was taken over by the UAE company. So it, it was worked, uh, uh, and, and it worked very well yeah. under the, uh, the British company for the last five years. And the last time around, American companies didn't bid, Joe. Uh, that was right. the problem. It ended up with a British company, fine with me, but uh, there wasn't a market. There, there, uh, the American companies didn't uh, didn't try to operate them. Right. The foreign, co foreign companies have been operating ports in the United States since the year 2000. I think that what's important to keep in mind is, you know, we talk about free trade and, and democratizing uh, other parts of the world, I think that there is no better way to democratize than to increase contracts and not decrease them, you know, just based on, you know, this industry of fear. I think we can have plenty uh, of contact with the UAE without turning our ports over to it. Yeah, I yeah, agree, Director most Woolsey, thank area. you we so much. Them over. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Director Woolsey, Peter King, and Arsalan. Greatly appreciate it. And I agree, especially with Congressman King. Our ports are our most vulnerable entry points right now because of a lot of mistakes that have been made by our leaders in Washington over the past five years. This is a dreadful step to take, and we need to correct it. We'll be right back in a second.